What's going on, YouTube? So, it's been a while since we've done anything Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel related on the YouTube channels. It's been a long time since we've done anything Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel related at all. But recently, I decided to swap off PS4 and switch over to PC and data link didn't work or data transfer didn't work, whatever it's called. Uh, I guess at some point I booted up the game on PC. I don't remember doing it, but I guess I did. And the current Steam account I'm using, I am locked. Could not data transfer, didn't want to make a second Steam, so instead we decided to start completely the hell over. And that's exactly what we did. Started over, we ran through the tutorials, the few that give you some uh, credits or whatever, and we decided to make Salomon Grades. And not only did we make Salomon Grades, we made it via the structure deck and master packs. We made it with the structure decks, the master packs, and um, a little bit of gems, maybe about 3,000, 4,000 gems. It was 3,000, about 3,000 gems or 2,000 gems, but you get those gems basically for free. Those gems come to you just by finishing the tutorial, and then you also have 1,500 gems that you have to spend on the starter deck. So this is roughly 3,500 gems worth of fresh Master Duel packs and account, right? Okay, the deck list is a little weird, but let me just go into the card by card. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I'm currently gold. I'm on a 10 game win streak, which is really sick. I made it into gold at the end of October and I'm already back into gold at the beginning, the first day of season, whatever the fuck season we're on, 11, season 12. I don't know what season we're on, uh, but November 1st, 2022 for what that matters. The card by card, we'll start with um, the Solomon Great cards. So the Salmon Grid engine is like not super small, but it's not very big either. It's like a medium sized engine, especially when it comes to the main deck. The extra deck, it does take up a lot of space, but we'll go ahead and get into it. We got an honorary Salmon Great monster, three flame Buffalo. This card is amazing. This is basically the thing you want to open with any other Salmon Great monsters to just turn through your deck further whenever you make something like your Bale Links. Three of those, three Foxy, pretty all right starter. Uh, you usually want to use it as an extender out of the graveyard. The main, like the, the normal summon effect, doesn't usually net you a card. Your hand has to be pretty bad for you to even attempt using that effect. You usually want to use it out of the graveyard once you've established something like a Sunlight Wolf. So you can bring it back if you don't have a Jack Jaguar. So that you can continue to re recycle and churn through cards. Um, got two Gazelle. Gazelle's at two, so we have to play two of it. I mean, you could probably get away with one, but I don't see any reason to play it at one because it's clearly limited to two. It's a very powerful card. There's Spinny. Spinny brings itself back from the graveyard, and it also lets you put uh, it also lets you put itself in the graveyard if you control Salvador Monster by discarding it and targeting a physical monster on the field to get attack, which is really nice. Uh, it's put something itself back as long as you control Salvador Great. So uh, if you go Gazelle into Spinny, which is a two card combo. Um, you can, or I'm sorry, that's the one card combo. If you go Gazelle, you dump Spinny off Gazelle, which is basically a Foolish Barrel for any Salomon Great card. And then you can make one of your extra deck monsters in Mirage Stalio to start your combo if you drew other extenders. Salomon Great Falco. This card's really cool, actually. If it's in the graveyard, if it's sent to the graveyard from anywhere, from the deck, from the hand, from the field, you get to set a Salomon Great spell a trap directly from your graveyard, which is really nice. Uh, it lets you recycle your War or your Rage when you can only get back one off of your Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf, or it lets you get back a circle so you can continue to extend on the next turn, or even use it as some sort of a um, some sort of a disruption or interruption tool, like a Forbidden Lance, or even your Sanctuary, because we are only playing one Sanctuary. Uh, there's two other Solomon Great monsters in the main deck that I play. I play a two of Jack Jaguar. This card's amazing. This card lets you recycle your, your extra deck monsters and your main deck monsters. You mainly want to be doing it with your extra deck monsters, like your Sunlight Wolf, uh, so that you're not churning through them all and not being able to continue to reincarnation link or relink. And then the one foul. We're playing only one foul specifically because of the fact that it just. It's an extender. There's no reason not to have it. It's probably the next best name. It's either this or Mole, and I think the foul's probably significantly better than Mole. Um, for this Salamari card continued, we still have the Sanctuary, which. Let's you do your relink stuff. I don't really use the other effect. Doesn't come up very often to gain life points. The one Will of Salem Grit, which is basically either Monster Reborn, um, Photon Thrasher, or Soul Charge. Uh, it's Soul Charge because you can actually send it from the field to the graveyard to target a Salem Grit card on your field, a Salem Grit monster that was relinked. 
Um, and then you get to special summon back monsters from your graveyard equal to the link rating. So if you relink a Blade Link, you get to summon back one. If you relink a Sunlight Wolf, which is the only other Solomon Great Extra Deck monster that you can relink, we're not playing Heat Leo, you get to summon back two, which is still really, really good, right? That's a plus. That's a plus one. It's really good. Um, three Sign at Mining, which may as well be a Salomon Great card in this deck. Uh, you discard a card, and then you can get any level 4 or lower Cyberus monster from your deck to your hand. There's some pretty nutty combos with this, where you can sign it mining away one of your Salomon Great names and get Gazelle, and Gazelle will trigger, because Gazelle does not have to be in your hand on the discard. It has to be there for the resolution, and on the resolution of sign at Mining, Gazelle will be in your hand. You could also get something like Flame Bufferlo, which is also really good to have um, as a starter. And... I guess it's just into the other last two Salon Grid cards. So we got the one Roar and the run one Rage. We're not playing Potter Desire, so we only play one of each. There is an argument in a 41 card deck to potentially play two Roar, so you can actually get one back off its own effect and have one to be able to recycle with with uh, Sunlight Wolf if the issue ever comes up, but I haven't had it come up too many times. It's potentially something that might happen, uh, but I don't think that... It's happened to me in a detrimental way where I really needed that second for, you know, uh, for the non Salomon Great cards in the main deck. We have some hand traps and some going second cards. For the going second cards, we have Impermanence, which I guess also counts as a going first card, but mainly we're using this to go second to get through some problematic cards. A Kaiju, Dogeron, specifically because it's the fire one. Uh, I kind of hate that I have to craft this because it's a UR. Uh, my my camera's in the way. You can't see that that's a UR, but it's a UR. I had to craft that. kind of sucked. Um, one nib, which also is just another stop button. I actually beat someone today using specifically nib. Like, nib literally ended their turn. It was pretty nice. It was against a Trickstar player, which was pretty funny. Didn't expect Trickstars to summon five times on their first turn, but they did. And I lost the game because of it. Um, some more, some hand traps. Two Cosmic Cyclones. Uh, we don't really want to deal with the pesky back row. One DD Crow. Uh, I only wanted to craft one. I may have crafted two, but I swapped over to one and one Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Both of these kind of come up every now and then. They're also really nice to draw off of. Our three Max C's. Our last hand trap is three Ash because it's the most generic and also because we're able to get it back off of Sunlight Wolf, which is really nice. It doesn't come up too, too often, but there are a lot of times where you already have Gazelle or you have Circle to get Gazelle or whatever one monster you really want back off of Sunlight Wolf. So instead of getting that monster back, uh, if you had a, a Falco trigger to get you back a circle, so you'll be able to get that Gazelle on the start of your opponent's turn, you can instead get back an Ash. You have more interruptions. And the last two cards in the main deck are, of course, called by the Graves, so that we can let our plays get through. And sometimes this even helps whenever people are playing decks where they have multiple names in the graveyard or something, and they have one on the field so that we can negate. Uh, it doesn't come up too it doesn't come up too often, but this card is extremely versatile. I don't see any reason not to craft it. It is a UR, but it's one of the URs that we crafted real early, and it, it felt good to craft. It's the extra deck. Um, we have Mirage Dalio, of course. Um, this is an extender, and it also is a disruption and a board breaker all in the one. It's pretty good. I really like this card. Uh, the only thing that comes up is sometimes you can't use Fire Monster effects. It comes up uh, after you use it. You can only use Fire Monster effects for the rest of the turn after you use this card, after you activate it. Uh, you you got to try to not use this first. You got to try to use it after you use things like your Update Jammer and Access Code, but if you can't, then you probably want to try to find another line. I think this deck is pretty versatile in the extra deck. You can find a lot of lines to kind of establish the same goal. Three Bay Links. Three Bay Links is pretty good. Uh, you only really need the first effect to go off once. Chain blocking it is cool, but you usually don't need to. It's super fine if you can't chain block it and you'd rather let your flame buffer low resolve or something. Three Sunlight Wolf. Once again, kind of standard. You definitely need three so that you don't ever run out of them. You want to be able to recycle them with Jack Jaguar. You want to, be able to put them back into the extra deck and just uh, keep relinking if you have to so that you can keep yourself gassed up because this will get you up to two cards back, which is pretty powerful, right? It's a, it's a link to, so usually it will require two monsters, and then when you use those two monsters, you get back two cards, which is pretty powerful, right? It's just kind of like a recurring engine. Uh, and then Deco Tucker Heat Soul, which I think is like staple for the deck now. This, there's a lot of turns where this card comes up where you're sitting on like three hand traps or two interruptions, two or three hand traps, and like... Uh, a Cosmic Cyclone, or um, an Infinite Permanence you can set, and then you make Deco Tucker Heat Soul to just draw two cards, one during your turn, one during your opponent's turn, to, and have the backup of your Maxis and your, D, your DD Crows, your Ghost Over, your Ashes, things like that. It's pretty good. I really like this card. It also draw you into pesky, into pesky cards like your 
Cosmic Cyclones and your Dogron so that you can continue to break people's boards and stuff. On to the flex spots. Uh, we've got the Baguska, pretty standard. I don't think this is actually truly a flex spot because I don't think I've ever seen a Salamigrate monster that can, a Salamigrate deck that can make rank fours, not play Baguska. I'm also playing Dweller because sometimes Blind Dweller is really good against certain meta decks right now. Um, especially because we have the Foul in the main deck, right? So Jack Jaguar Foul is a really easy way to get into Abyss Dweller. Same thing with Falco, but Falco doesn't come up nearly as often. It's usually Jack Jaguar plus Foul if you happen to draw the Foul. Uh, Splash Mage lets you combo, bring back stuff. Link Grebo lets you combo, bring back stuff. Ramsco Talker lets you combo, bring back stuff. Like these are literally, these two are literally monster reborns. So you can climb into your boss monster. Access Code Talker. And to pair with that Access Code Talker, we have the Update Jammer. I've actually been killing more people with um, Sunlight Wolf plus Update Jammer into Access Code than I've been using Transcode into Update Jammer to kill people, or Transcode into Splash Mage, or Transcode into whatever, to have the 5300 or 50. What'd it be? I'm bad at math here. It's 1,000 per, yes. It'd be 5,300 off of friends code, but I, it rarely comes up. A lot of times it's 43 with double attacking is good enough, and you don't have to have as many cards to establish something like that. Uh, I really like this deck. I'm, I'm actually a Prank Kids player, but Meow Meow at 1, so I decided when I came back and made a new account and wanted to just get in there fresh, I'd make something cheap, bu budget, and hopefully easy. The deck is easy. It was kind of weird when I was first learning it. Now that I've been playing it for like three days, I think I, I, pr I probably know most of the lines that are going to lead me to the game or lead me to a really powerful board position to close out the game on the next turn, whether that be turn five or turn four. Uh, turn three kills do happen a lot because of update update jammer plus access code talker or trans code talker plus access code talker. Um, the deck is resilient. It's a very, very resilient deck. Not super powerful, not super top heavy. But it is a really good deck. I really like this deck, and I think if you're just starting in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and you want something you can craft, the starter decks aren't bad. I think Dragon Maids is pretty cool, and I think this deck is really, really fire. I actually beat a lot of Dragon Maid players moving up to gold where I am now, and I think they were based off of the starter deck as well. I saw like a Striker Dragon or two, but I mainly saw their Haddock Sphere and the Fusion Monsters. And well, I think that deck is, is pretty sweet, and it has a very interesting playstyle. I don't think that it has a, a playstyle that suits the current meta. I think that the way this deck works, being able to just slot in all these hand traps, and then when you're ready to move on to something else that also plays hand traps, but is a good, solid, competitive deck, you already have all those hand traps crafted because you didn't have to spend too much on the main deck. Anyways, this has been Beanie Thuggish for the YouTubes, talking about some Yu-Gi-Oh! Talking about, specifically, Salamon Gates in the current format for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Signing out and saying, 